I'm uh, a touch worried today, Stugatz. Uh, you spent most of the time in here uh, sequestered in this room, mm -hmm. but uh, the meeting today yeah. had a bit of a cocaine -y energy to it. Well, Mike's here. <laughs> well, the playoffs are here. The, the playoffs are here, although if you're going to take Mike out, it can be that I heard <laughs> shouted through soundproof doors, with all due respect, the phrase, with all due respect, and it meant because arguments were breaking out all over the room. Mm -hmm. I heard more with all due respects that felt disrespectful to me. Yep, they usually do. I mean, Is that true? All due respect is kind of an umbrella for I don't really respect you. All right, put it but on. But I have to say this on the front end. Put it on the yeah. poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. When someone starts with, with all <laughs> due respect, are we headed toward disrespect? <laughs> I think you're right Respectful about that. Respectful disrespect. <laughs> is, that what, uh, is that what Kendrick Perkins and Shaq and Barkley are having right now? Respectful disrespect? Because uh, Kendrick Perkins is saying Shaq and Barkley are not watching the games. They're not watching basketball. And Shaq's response is, can a non-Hall of Famer talk about two Hall of Famers? Got his ass. Good point by Shaq. Shaq's <laughs> always got that as a winning argument, but uh, Kendrick Perkins is also right. I don't think they're watching Knicks games. But they're Hall of Famers. That's true. And <laughs> and as an added bonus, he didn't even hit him with the other card and will be better at broadcasting than you forever, too. <laughs> we'll be Hall of Famers as broadcasters also. Well, Barkley, for sure. I'd cut off his food supply. Shaq owns, like, every restaurant. I'd be like, Perkins, you want to talk about me? No more Papa John's. No more Chacaroni any of the restaurants. Exactly right. No more any of the stuff that I own. You can't eat anymore. You would just say, you assume that the Ken Kendrick Perkins is on the Shaquille O'Neal-owned restaurant's uh, buffet tour? You assume he's not? What? <laughs> That's a good point. Respectfully. 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 <laughs> it, is, it is disrespect, right? got a lot of energy around here and a lot to talk about because it felt like the playoffs started last night just if you were watching hockey and how it is that Washington got in oh, it was and great. then you're watching the play on playing games which are a genuine success where you're watching you can tune in one game are the Warriors finished are the Warriors as we know them finished and are they really going out with Clay Thompson going 0 for 10 0 for 10, Clay Thompson, that's going to be his last game. That's how it sputters to an end. So you saw one of the old greats extinguished, and somehow LeBron is beating Zion at his best <laughs> when LeBron is 6 for 20 and Anthony Davis is 6 for 16. You've got to win that game at home. Road playoff games. If you're New Orleans, you have to win that game at home. You do. If – you're the Lakers. Mm -hmm. You can't believe that you won a road playoff game, the equivalent of a road playoff game, with the oldest player in the league, Anthony Davis and LeBron James. They played good games, but they were not efficient games. You have to beat them when you're at home. They just got a bunch of free throws. That was a fun game to watch last night. LeBron is incredible. He really is. At 39 years of age, to give you 23, 9, 9, three steals, two blocks, incredible. But – it was unfortunate because I wanted to see that game play out with Zion being healthy. That was the best game Zion has had as a pro, 40 points. 
at home in a must-win game, and he got hurt late in the game, and I have no idea what happened to Zion Williamson. It was strange. Okay, but this is where I wanted to start today because the Warriors are finished. It's it's over. I, I told you that a lot of people thought that they were going to turn something on in the playoffs, and it's just an old thing now. And I want to put up this tweet from Miles Brown because you have to understand, Stu Gatz, this thing burned hot for a decade. Best shooting backcourt we've ever seen. You've lived long enough to see them revolutionize the sport. They left it different than they found it. The game is played totally different because of how they mastered it and showed us, oh, wait, three-on-one break. Look, they've got two guys going to the corners. They don't want the two-point shot anymore. They want the three-point shot. But in the middle of that, a furnace. And here's what Miles Brown says about that furnace. They were 73-9, and nine, but this guy couldn't contain his nut-touching fetish. They got a top three uh, small forward ever, and this guy ran him off. They got a top tier six man, and this guy punched him in the face. He pods poorly with no respect for reality and is terrified of open jumpers. Free Steph Curry. I don't want to hear it today. I mean, it's easy to take shots and poke holes at Draymond Green today. Draymond Green was a massive part of that team winning four NBA titles, and he helped recruit Kevin Durant. I don't want to hear it today. Okay, but nothing he said there was untrue, and I thought you would buy in on as soon as the game is over. Fetish free, is strong. Free Steph Curry. Who, who are it? we talking about? I, I don't know. Who is, it, who is he referring uh, to? Uh, you think fetish? You think a nut fetish is too strong? Nut, nut touching yeah. fetish feels strong. Yeah. It's, I mean, he's done it a ton of times with his feet and his competitive head. advantage via nuts is probably more like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't like the wording? He yeah, got, it's just weird. He got ejected for a game in a in the final. He cost them a championship because he couldn't stop kicking people in the junk. Sounds like you're kink shaming. Mm. Of all people. The NBA kink shamed ah. him, not me. They they suspended him, not me. I like when somebody, when a whole team builds around a crazed furnace that makes Steph Curry cry. I'll I, these are solid points that he brings up. Yeah, he ran off Kevin Durant, but they also had a lot of success. And, I mean, lamenting the loss of Jordan Poole is a decision, I guess. But uh, they... <laughs> they won plenty. Yes. <laughs> and he was they a big won reason. four titles. Yeah, I'm I sure mean, you've seen that clip of Clay Thompson explaining to Draymond on Draymond's podcast exactly why they need him out there. Even during this stretch where there was a dip in form, he was still hugely important to them. So I, I understand, like, dancing on the grave of the Golden State Warriors at this time and particularly dancing on Draymond Green's grave. But it's it feels like a weird flex. Hugely successful immensely successful their season was over the second they signed chris paul lebron they almost traded for him which mm. would have made uh he didn't want to go there made things interesting uh i want to give me a stat of the day here give me the stat of the day music start of the day start of the day it is the start of the day start of the day start of the day it is the start of the day Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Warrior fans are mad today. They have gotten used to winning, and they spent the night, late into the night, arguing with a whispering Nick Wright on the internet. We'll get to that in a second. But the stat of the day, Stu Gatz, is that this year, okay, Clay Thompson went five for five on free throws in his last game mm -hmm. to have more than 125 for the season and therefore qualify. Clay Thompson had the highest shooting percentage. On the last day, passing teammate Steph Curry, okay? So Steph Curry shot for the season 92.3, and on the last day, Clay goes 5 for 5 to go over 125 and finish at 92.7. Two years ago, Jordan Poole, on the last day, goes 4 for 4 on the last day to pass Steph Curry for the free throw percentage lead from 92.3 to 92.4. Uh, that is inside the weeds. I just can't believe that that's statistically so. <laughs> that uh, two straight seasons, uh, not only has Steph Curry shot exactly 92.3% from the line, but both <laughs> seasons his teammate has passed him on the last day in free throw percentage. You think Steph cares? 
Do you? I think about that. I think if you're that good at such a meticulous thing like that, I don't know that anyone else does. I didn't even know if I could engage the room because it's just math, and who cares? It's free throw percentage. Why are these balloons here? I have no idea. Is it Stu's birthday? It's no. a one year here Happy at the Elser. Birthday. It's oh, our birthday. Too. One year here at the Elser, wow. which I am eternally grateful for because you want to talk about an upgrade hmm. in terms of venue and just studio size. But I, I am I was kind of taken aback at how loud the volume, no pun intended, was of people really enjoying the Golden State Warriors losing. And then I kind of figured it out. They didn't really get to grave dance on the uh on the golden state warriors when kevin durant left because if you remember how that finals ended with the raptors beating them clay got injured kevin durant got injured and it was really unsatisfying because golden state had all the excuses in the world to say you didn't actually knock out the champ so we've had that in reserve <laughs> we haven't really had the chance to celebrate with good reason saying definitively you're not good enough to this golden state team in quite a while what Mike is saying about the now of this, Stugatz, it is rare that you get the stage to yourself because LeBron won. LeBron won last night. Yes. So you can't turn – and and even if LeBron had lost, he would have had another chance. Something ended last night. Steph would look like he was crying on the court. Draymond can't stop getting ejected. They've got a problem with – because this part is fascinating to me, Stugatz. I would think that winning would always be fun. I would think that being better than everyone else all the time would always be fun. And yet, it's a pressure cooker that spits out Kevin Durant, that makes uh, Draymond run so high that he's punching teammates in the face, seems totally out, out of control. And last night, on the stage by itself, we get to say, before the playoffs really start, goodbye to the Golden State Warriors as you know them. Immediately after the game, Steve Kerr is saying, we want Clay back, and other people will want Clay. He will be a great shooter for somebody. But that team was light years ahead. Their ownership said, we're light years ahead. They built well, that's a- nonsense, Dan. They're not light years no, ahead. They, they had were. Steph Curry. Stugat- no, I but mean- then they got, no, Stugat- <laughs> they had competitive advantages because of what they could do okay. around the salary cap and right. because- around the business. They were light years ahead. And the league caught up as they got old, and now it's over. It's done. I mean, our basketball expert, I was telling him all season, I mean, I'm, I, all season, I'm like, this is finished, right? And he was, nope, I'm still scared of them. I'm scared of playoff experience. I respect too much how hard it is to win. You just mentioned, uh, what? who did you mention? Did you mention Toronto? Kawhi Leonard won one, solidified himself forever. It's really hard to do. Toronto has fallen apart since then. That Sacramento team in free fall at the end of the season. They did it once last year. Then the expectations came, free fall. That's what ended you. That Everybody was fearing, what if they turn up that championship thing? No. They, they got crushed. Clay's, they did. Clay's 0 for 10 in a game that they needed. Well, Steph wasn't, you know, he wasn't great. He needed to be great last night, especially with Clay being that off, and he was not great. And people are probably celebrating. Mike is right. The fact that this team appears to be finally finished. Steph Curry is not finished. This team, the core of this team, is done, and people are delighting in that. It just felt like Steph had to wear all of the burden of Draymond, of Clay Thompson, of the entire team, and it was almost too much for him yesterday in the first half. He was terrible. Yeah. Ellis was taking his cookies. Keegan Murray was stopping him everywhere he went. He got off a couple cookies. shots, but that was it. I'm amazed that we all stayed up that late to watch it, first of all. I was locked Second in. Second of all, what I'm confused what Nick Wright did. And third of all, were you a little sad you weren't invited to his wedding thing this weekend, Dan? Uh, I'm just learning right now that he had a wedding thing this weekend. Wow. Mike uh, also was not invited. Yeah, I'm so A wedding thing. Renewed vows. Really? That's Renewed a little bit vows. more intimate, It was, it was basically a wedding. And, a, I mean, Joy Taylor was there. Omani huh. was there. Uh, you are wow. informing you guys were not me. There. I'm oh, learning. Mm. You, you are correct. Mike should have been there. I mean, uh, Jessica, put it in. Uh, put it on the side. I want to talk about this with you because you're just teaching me something you're right doing now. The Trump meme. I'm just hearing this for the first time. You're hurt. <laughs> vow renewal. Billy, do not so invite stupid. me to your vow renewal. How many Jesus. years is it? Right. Well, I mean, I don't know the story. You there. buy a gift for that? No, absolutely. But they, if you get a, a first wedding gift, that's it. No renewal. They, they, well, Billy, I don't we know. all know why you weren't invited. Okay. Well, I don't know if they had a big wedding initially and maybe this was an opportunity to like okay a few years gone by we'll like let's (laughs) renew our vows and actually have a wedding (laughs) to the size and scope that we didn't have before i don't even understand the concept we're just congratulating you on not getting divorced like that's everyone that's not divorced they might have have eloped you don't know the the deal who in our crew you think is most likely to renew 
Dan. Yeah, Dan, for sure. He just got married. Yeah, Dan. It's still Dan. Did the invites in the mail. I think it's funny that we're critiquing somebody else's romantic vow renewal when we have a bunch of balloons in the studio celebrating our year in a building. Wow. I don't think that's even right, if I'm going to be honest with you, because I got like one of those flashback things that I was already in the building like a week ago. So I think that we got the date wrong. By the way, when I was walking in this morning, I saw on the sidewalk right in front of the Elser a pack of Newports inside a, a house. Half drinking like beer cup, like yeah. dip cup or something. That was mine. And I thought about the Clevelander for a second because I was yeah. like, man, we used to see this every single day. Yeah. I kind of look back the way I do. Like Marlins Park is nice, very fancy. But I look back at Pro Player and I kind of miss those days. You guys don't have any nostalgia for the Clevelander? Yeah. Like a little like there's part of me. Obviously, this yeah. is so much nicer. Yeah. But there's things I just I could just kind of miss that time. Yeah. Man, I, I don't miss it at all. I, do. I really don't. I, I want I want to meet you there. It was so smelly. Yeah, you know, I, all, I, everywhere. I, there are aspects of being on ESPN that I miss. That's, That's what it. Chris misses. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> from the facility standpoint, no. I miss it every time I see McAfee on TV. Oh boy. Miss it when I got my seats for WrestleMania, I'll tell you that. Just every airport, every television. I'm there, you know, and I'm on vacation at a bar, just getting a virgin pina colada. I look up, Pat's on every TV. I go, I used to be there. Remember when Not where he's sitting, where the guy with the half mullet thing is sitting. <laughs> Tony, do you know where taking his cookies is from? Do you know, because you used the phrase taking his cookies, and yeah. I think you're too young to remember where that originated. The first time I ever heard it was about Pablo Pr Prigioni of the New York uh, Knicks, <laughs> and it was <laughs> the loudest Knicks fan I had ever heard to that date talking. Pablo Prigioni uh, taking your cookies. That's right. I remember that. From 2010. That's the first time I ever It's been around since way longer than that, Dan. We're talking about like annual mixtape days, real hoopers know back in the day, early 2000s. Okay, I, just I thought, reject all cookies. I thought you were too young to know where that phrase came from, but I will tell you now, Jessica, what happened with Nick Wright. Uh, Warrior fans, you can imagine, right? I don't know how the people listening to this feel about Warrior fans, but any fan base that does a gluttonous amount of winning and has the best thing is going to become an entitled, spoiled, loud fan base. I don't think there's such a thing as a graceful entity inside of sports fandom if you've won a bunch. Like the Heat fan base? Any fan yeah. base that does a good amount of winning gets used to it, and that one, to me... Like, imagine what the Patriot fan was like last season. I mean, you're running Bill Belichick out of town, and nobody even blames you, because, yep, that's where he put the standard. The Warriors have put this standard on, they've changed the entire sport, and now fans are mad, and they're saying Steve Kerr doesn't know what he's doing. But understand what you saw last night. That whole conference is better than them. That's, they lost to a team in free fall, one game for your season, the game was not close. Nobody fears Sacramento this year. If it happened last year, you would have understood. That team was, was not playing well at the end of the season, and the dynasty falls to its knees when you expected something from it. And so those fans are going to be rabid about why did that just happen? Why is it over? Why does everyone get to dance on our grave? Those fans need to get over it. They've had Steph Curry. They had Kevin Durant. They had Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, four NBA championships. Get over it. Okay, Seriously, they're Dan, not, any fan base would take that run and be happy with it. They're not over it because last night after this game, there is a time for blame. And Nick Wright has ended up, I don't know why he's doing this. I think perhaps because he's just addicted to giving his opinion to people and winning arguments and he's mad he is mad because now Mina and Pablo Pablo just broke that huge story yesterday Mina and Pablo are teaming up to do like celebrity game show stuff together wow and so Nick is up in the middle of the night pathetically desperately looking for a place to argue with warrior fans and he found it on Twitter spaces think we have a good idea of what our coach is and isn't and cap uh, is capable no, of doing since no, we watched all 82 games this season? Uh, start to finish. I, 82 start of to course, finish. I understand the idea that you what you are doing right there is like an appeal to authority fallacy. But I will go with it that you guys are the authority. But then that but if you want to follow that same exact logical train, then don't you think the general manager, team president, and owner watch it even closer than you guys? 
Like, no, 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 you don't. I disagree with that. No, absolutely not. Oh I disagree with that. <laughs> the same way that you don't watch just... every single game. Bro. Is the same uh, okay, so, I, I mean, he destroyed this entire fan base as if it wasn't destroyed enough. He did that from his bathroom. Yeah. Kids were sleeping. That's something I mean... you do that your wife doesn't know you're doing. Well, yes, and, and this, I thought at the beginning, what I thought was happening at the beginning, I'm like, man, I've never heard Nick so reasonable, and this is a great way to do debate when you have the winning argument. Pound the facts. Don't pound the table. And so I'm thinking to myself, he's being a real pro keeping his composure. No, he didn't want his wife to hear it. He was going to wake up the kids. And so this is how he argued with the Warrior fan base while dancing on its grave to their faces. The way you talk, the way you just said about Trace and like you trying to make it sound like it's a ridiculous thing. You got to understand something. Dario Saric, you know Dario Saric, right? Do you think that Dario Saric is a guy who can play the five? No, what I think is, what here's what I honest to God think, and I don't think this is a controversial opinion. If the amount of minutes Trace Jackson does or does not get is the difference between your team getting rocked by a Kings team in free fall and winning a championship, then you're kidding yourself. Winning an argument, <laughs> argument, whispering from the bathroom at one thirty a.m. is something is the, is a place the take has never been taken before. It almost turns down the the volume on the entire argument, right? Because right. everybody's like, "All right, this guy's whispering. I've got to kind it's of too also whisper too." Yeah. He's got yeah. a new show. Take a shit. One thirty a.m. Go to sleep. A deuce. We were all watching. We were not we, all of us. We were all. Yeah. Awake yeah. watching the game. If Jessica's complaining, Jessica has spent her her late twenties complaining about nine thirty starts in in the NBA, and she and you're watching to hate the war or to for for it to be finished. Honestly, I I really didn't have a, a dog in that fight, but I I did just kind of need to go to bed after Reggie Miller's uh, late game. Uh, analysis on if Anthony Brutal. Davis should make his free throws or not. After that, I was like, it's oh, it's sleepy time. I feel like I'm going crazy. Is he okay? All right, let's uh, let's play that for the audience. Here's things that you talk about on the bus as players. If he makes the first one, you're up three. Do you try to purposely miss the second one, knowing that they don't have a t any timeout? No timeout, and they've got to go coast to coast because as soon as you miss it, time is going to start. As soon as it's touched, or do you just make them both be up four and game over? These are things that's that probably, are disgusting. Yeah, that's <laughs> not, it's, not it's not disgusting I mean, enough. God. You're right. It's I'm, not. I'm going to take the game over option, Reg. I like. I, I'm not like the basketball is not my favorite sport. Like I have other sports that I understand the X's and O's of a lot more than basketball. And when even I'm watching it, and I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Then you know it's bad. Jessica, this I, I want to. When you okay. say that doesn't sound right, uh, I called Billy into the room here before the show because I I was genuinely curious about something that was on the TV screens in here that I was learning of for the first time, just like I learned that Nick Wright renewed his vows uh, there. And a cold chill ran through me, Jessica, when you informed me of that on air. I did not know how to react because it swept through me with, uh, with pain that I had not been invited to that because I thought Nick and I were closer than that. I can't imagine how much it hurt Mike. But uh, when I walked in here today... I'm good. Well, before you say you're good, wait till you see what I'm about to show the audience. Can you put behind me, please, uh, the promo for what Billy and Stugatz are doing for God Bless Football? Uh, so right behind me, they're going to Detroit Draft City. And you see that is a, a lovely uh, image behind me. For some reason, uh, that is Billy. And I'm told Stugatz uh, that are in, That's not me. in Kiss Makeup. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's Adam Lefko. It is not Stugatz. Like that, is it JoJo Siwa? The, I, so, it might be Jay Leno. I, it is not Stugatz. I, don't, I, I see Billy in there in, in, with Kiss Makeup. But when I look at this other person, this other person is in no realm Stugatz. That's Stugatz. That's him. I mean, how do you not know that that's Stugatz? That you've been sitting right next to him, and Stugatz is saying that's not him. That's him. I'm going to need to check dental records on that it one. It doesn't look like him. It looks like it's somebody with a, a far bigger chin than him. Yeah. Well, I was younger days. I was like two years ago at the Clevelander. Well, what is that? What Where? What are you guys doing? You guys are going to be in Detroit. That's the first time learning of this. No is, idea. The Motor the, City. Well, guys, very exciting, and I guess this is the announcement. Next Thursday... 
we're going to be doing a draft watch along. Yeah. Wow. Multi city draft watch along wow. will be happening. Woo-hoo. That's what these balloons are for. They That's told right. you about one year. It's to celebrate Woo. a multi city draft watch along. You can join us at 8 p.m. and we're going to be taking you roughly between 8 p.m. and the Dolphins pick ish. <laughs> Dan, be honest. You're asking for a printout of this to go home with tonight, right? Whoa. This you, doesn't look like Stugatz. I saw to the me. table move a couple of times. He, he's jealous. He's not in the graphic. <laughs> that is Stugatz. Look, that's him. And, and we're going to be joined by some friends. Stugatz is going to be on scene in Michigan. We're well, not right. on the scene. He's going to be in Michigan. In Ann Arbor. Where's, yeah. Where's Where's Lefko going to be? I mean. so Stugatz will be up in Michigan. He's going to be there with Mikey A reporting live. I'm going to be here holding down the fort with Jess, with Tony. Juju will be here. More friends will come along. You guys are welcome to attend if you'd like. Um, and then we're going to be trying to check in with Lucy. We're trying to figure out exactly the legalities of that situation because she's going to be at the draft he's in Michigan? talking to the fans. Yeah, Wait, he's going to be in Michigan. Are you writing off this trip oh, because you're in the state that the draft yeah. is being held but not the city? He'll be so, in Michigan. So Northwestern plays at Michigan on Sunday. Winner wins the Big Ten. I'll be writing this all off. I'm very happy about that. Then I just take a little 30-minute drive down to the Motor City mm-hmm. and cover the NFL draft. How about that? He looks, I, you can actually like go. I, I think we can say where they're going to be. If not, we'll just clean this up somehow. Stugatz is going to be at the DraftKings Sportsbook in Michigan. Wow. So it's open to the public. You can go and visit him. You can I visit am. Mikey A. You can Mike take in the draft along with Stugatz in Michigan. Stugatz looks like Mrs. Doubtfire with the pie on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Were you accusing me of being jealous that I don't get to be at the NFL draft? No, they're no. dressed up. No, no, dressed up. Dressed dressed up. Dress Didn't you go yes, to a Kiss yes, concert dressed yeah. up? Do you not I know did. Cannon? I did. <laughs> How offended was Nick Wright when someone asked him, do you know who Dario Saric is? <laughs>
We skipped over yesterday a little too quickly, Stugat, uh, the news that Pablo Torre was breaking on Pablo Torre Finds Out. I do find amusing that a couple of weeks ago, a more difficult story that is legitimately scandalous, where you've got mortgage crisis at the top of the NBA, you have, um, you know, two owners in Dan Gilbert and, and Matt Ishbia who don't like each other, and it was legitimate great reporting and um, a scandal that is super interesting, and it didn't resonate the way that yesterday's news coverage resonated because Pablo Torre unearthed on Pablo Torre Finds Out the recruitment video that uh, the Knicks tried to use on LeBron James. And, Stugatz, it's not just that they ruined The Sopranos. They also ruined The Sopranos' story by having by telling us the ending that Tony Soprano snitches at the end and ends up in witness protection. But let's play that clip for David Sampson. Yeah, I'll take it down. Tony, I'm so glad we moved to New York. Life is so much better now. Yeah, life's good here, Carl. <laughs> Even if we are in a witness protection program. <laughs> now, we just got to find a place for your friend LeBron to live. What's he like? Well, he's a modern guy, but he respects tradition. Well, here's something classy on the east side. Was well, is it big enough? It's going to be entertaining a lot of people in New York. It's very expensive. Oh, that's not going to be a problem. You've got to find something magnificent. Something there's nothing in the world like it, one of a kind, like he is. Well, here's a place. It says it gets really loud there. Take a look. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's going to be perfect for him. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is... <laughs> <laughs> so that story has exploded. Pablo Torre finds out that video will be the most watched that he's had. What did you make of all of it, David? Because that's one minute of it, but it's 10 minutes of recruiting LeBron. Of course, those videos never mean anything. And you spend, you get a mandate from your owner. Hey, we're trying to get this free agent. Let's get celebrities. Let's put their name on the marquee. We'll do a jersey with their name. And players don't care about that. They really don't. LeBron didn't watch that video and say, oh, I want to be a Nick. It didn't even occur to him to care. <laughs> it's great that Pablo unearthed it. He found out. But from a practical standpoint, it was pretty meaningless. Wow, you really sucked the air out of that. Yeah. What do you want me to tell you? Do you want me to tell you, wow, that video did it. I can't believe LeBron took his talents to South Beach. What did the Heat do to get LeBron? Their video must have been amazing showing him Fisher Island or Star Island or Fantasy Island. That's not what happened. He became a Heat. That was the worst day of my career when LeBron took his talents to South Beach. Why? I was in an elevator on the road because I knew that was it. Total irrelevance for all teams in Miami because LeBron, he was at his, in his prime coming to Miami. Ah. And we had survived the Shaq stuff, but now it was over. And I knew it the minute he said it. And it had been rumored, but I didn't want it to be true, and it was. What did the video look like that you guys did for Heath Bell? <laughs> it, it just... <laughs> it was the game Hangman. It was not it was a video. <laughs> it was, you're going to pay me how much? I'm in. That That's actually exactly what happened, if you want to know. <laughs> well, I, I saw him pitch. I know that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. We offered him an extra year than anybody else, and we had been told he was the cream of the crop. He basically crapped on the crops. It, that's the, the way recruiting goes, it goes with contract length. And in the NBA, it goes with who you can be with, how you maneuver the cap. It's not about Spike Lee or it's not about Gloria Stefan. It's okay, just not about Okay, but you're stuff. just awfully cynical. And I think crapping on crops would help grow them. But you're awfully cynical of going just at every point. It's all about money. Only money matters. Uh, it might not sway the decision, but you're not going to tell me that it's not cool to sit there and watch the most popular television show of the time. Uh, you know, pretend to give you a new ending with actors of our time. Uh, what are you doing? You're saying that doesn't mean anything to anybody? I'm saying when they were in the conference room watching the video, I'm not even sure they were watching the video. If you ask LeBron what I would like to have seen on the episode, and I asked Pablo whether or not he would speak to LeBron about this, I want to know what LeBron was thinking during that meeting because he was meeting with a bunch of teams at the time. Did he have any recollection of any part of that video? And I would say we're DraftKings to lay odds. 
it would be three to one that he couldn't name one part of the Knicks video. He remembers laughing at it. I'm totally with David. Like Pat Riley walking in, dumping rings on the table. That's what gets LeBron well, James. I will I will tell you that when Pat Riley was trying to recruit LeBron back in Vegas, to David's point, uh, that LeBron and his guys had to be asked to turn off the World Cup because their feet were on the table and they weren't listening to the recruiting pitch. They were watching a World Cup game. I imagine LeBron living the meme and just saying, I knew he was in witness protection. I had actually <laughs> called that. I knew that. <laughs> the entire time <laughs> what i love about that episode of pablo torre finds out is that pablo as such an important journalist he wants to be known for what he does in journalism and you sort of buried the lead a little bit he's way more proud of the ishbia episode that didn't nearly resonate the way this did and this is not resonating because of the journalism or because he found out anything it's resonating because people are saying wait a minute now we know how the Sopranos ended, and that's being associated it's with not Pablo. Canon. It's not it's just not that. Canon. It's sorry. not just that. It's everyone loves a leaked video. Everyone loves a leaked well, video. <laughs> mostly leaked sex videos, not leaked recruiting I mean, videos. Hey, yo. okay. Showing your hand there. I mean, wow. A leaked scandal video. Like that's something what, that will. That, that what are you doing? What are you doing? Just what was the scandal? I'm in just this? like Draymond Green, the TMZ video. Anything that's leaked is made more salacious. But by David's the saying this isn't a scandal; it was just a pitch. Did he dip it in paint? I mean, uh, no. The sca- it is a scandal. The the scandalous part of this was: can we laugh at the Knicks because they botched a sure thing? They botched the play a generational talent. How did they botch it? They'd heard rumors of a video, and the video confirms the incompetence. That's that is why this this is it's not just the Sopranos, David. That's part of why this is resonating. I'm sorry, I may I've may, missed the whole thing. You're saying that LeBron is not a Nick because of that video. I am saying that this story is resonating because you have a leaked video. You have a video that people have wanted to see that is not supposed to be in someone's possession. Nobody gave a flying rat's ass about the video. What they're talking about is the Sopranos ending. David, and the fact David, that it's are not you the not blackout. Fam- David, are you not familiar with how rabid and passionate Knicks fans are? Like you're talking about a pop culture thing, and you're ignoring how crazed Knicks fans are about We're this. We're a two seed, though. We have Jalen like, Brunson. Like I mean. you're you're ignoring that part of what's happening now is New York is getting resuscitated, something that hasn't been here in a long time, which is the world is laughing at us. Watch us. We're going to prove them wrong. We've got lovable Jalen Brunson. Their fan base is being laughed at again today. It's a loud, proud fan base. Don't tell me that the Knicks fan that isn't at the center of this because it's, it allows everybody to laugh at the Knicks. I, I don't want to create any issues. I love Metal Arc and I love Pablo. I'm in New York City and I'm sort of around town. Nobody's talking about that part of it. Nobody. You're sort of around town. Uh, you're to the streets, Dano. Like, what does that even mean? I'm a man of the people. He's a man of the people. Oh, Sugatsa's so got to be in Michigan. Yeah. What, what does that mean? You're sort of around what town. What it means that yesterday, if we, if, if I must tell you, I got back from Nashville where I did a show and I'm on my way to Pittsburgh, but I stopped in Steel New York City. City to unpack and pack. But my girlfriend asked me to go to Times Square to do a scavenger hunt hmm. in order Ooh. to prepare for yeah. something that she's doing for the children she teaches. Uh. So I was in Times Square for an hour and a half. And instead of paying attention to her and what she was doing, I was asking people about the Pablo episode. Wow, David, <laughs> David Samson to finds out. <laughs> like, a little <laughs> research. Bing bong. And it turns out, whether it was tourists or not, the ones who had seen it, all they wanted to talk about was the Sopranos. It wasn't, oh, woe is me, we didn't get LeBron. Never came up. Coming for Lucy's stuff. <laughs> the saddest man on the street. It. You should. You should do. You should. We should rebrand you as the ruiner of the man on the street interview. <laughs> the saddest man on the where you're just lonely and trying to hide in your work instead of your life, and you're just wandering around asking people <laughs> to be a man on the street. You, you're a tourist from Guatemala. What do you think about LeBron? And <laughs> yeah, you're letting see the video way too inside <laughs> our first. <laughs> you know, you just said it. You said you wandered away from your life to do sad man on the street interviews. We all heard it the same way. I'm not revealing anything about your life. You're revealing it. 
It wasn't my finest moment. <laughs> there are no Knicks fans in Times Square. Also, no, you'd Just be surprised. Tourists, right? There's businesses around there. There's there's office buildings. And it's funny. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just tourists. <laughs> you so had, I, you so buying listen. a hot dog and just let me ask you. <laughs> you, you should do it. Dave. Like you're dog, undercover Dave, you to the dog do vendor. You, I would like for you to do that. Can you do? Can David Sampson do sad man on the street interviews where you get us twelve and a half minutes of content where we could? Just <laughs> if, if if you are in the New York area and you saw David Sampson just cupping his ear to a halal cart, please let us know. At Samson, how's the tour going? I heard some tension yesterday with Cody making fun of it. Uh, the tour is about to end. I think you've done a a brave thing trying to hustle your way. Uh, what did Cody do? Greg Cody. Oh, what did Greg Cody do? I didn't hear it. I'm he was sorry. mocking the crowds, I, the size of the crowds. You know, the fact that oh, you're a tour, all of it. I, I, I. They've been great crowds. There's been great engagement. Every stop is fun. It ends in New York on the 29th, where Pablo will be there. And Dan, you've been threatening to come. I don't know if you will, but it's been, we talked about Nashville sports. We're going to talk about Pittsburgh sports tomorrow. There's a lot to talk about with Russell Wilson. So I've loved it. So I've been asked to continue the tour in different cities. So I'm going to Chicago and St. Louis. Dates to be announced. Miami. Maybe even Montreal. The, so the tour has been on. extended. I would avoid wow. that stuff. Wait a minute. The tour has been extended. Uh, I was offered. Remember, the tour is yes, it's a profitable tour in every way. It's good for Metal Arc. It's good for me. It's good for nothing personal, and I love it. It's a lot of work because I still do the eight a.m. live shows where I had fun talking about Reggie Miller this morning. But I, I don't mind traveling. I don't mind escaping my life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you allowed in Canada? I mean, Montreal seems security. like a bad idea, David. <laughs> like, honestly, don't go back to Montreal. No, I, Montreal is such a great city. It's been so many years that it's it's been 20 years. Right. It's enough already. Since what? <laughs> Since very bad things happened. <laughs> he Caused stole, by whom? He stole the Expos. He brought them down here. I was being sarcastic. Yeah, I know what happened. Video. Okay, well, I'm, t I'm explaining to the audience, lest the audience not know. They might not. They might just associate him with the Marlin stuff, not also the Expo stuff. I'm guessing there are large swaths of our audience that don't know a Montreal Expos ever existed. Tony, can you name an Expo? Vladdy. Boom. <laughs> a second one? Uh, <laughs> if it's our audience, it's because of senility. More with Samson next. <laughs>
I'm going to be super interested, and David, I'd be interested in your opinion on this, on if it carries forward, if this is momentum or a flash in the pan. Okay, but can we can we just can, – Dan, I've been celebrating it for two weeks. Okay. I'm just asking that I, question. No, but, and you can, I, but I just – before we get to just questioning whether they can do it, let's just stop for a moment – and have David's analysis on what it means okay. that out of nowhere we we have these kinds of numbers that don't have a precedent for a sport and something just blossoming right in front of you. It was a fascinating dichotomy when you saw the numbers for the WNBA draft and then you saw the numbers for the Masters final round and you see two sports potentially going in different directions. And then when you compare the WNBA draft numbers blowing away Major League Baseball's draft, the NHL draft, and you're thinking to yourself, is this all Caitlin Clark? And if it is, what do they do to continue this? And you heard the commissioner of the WNBA say, we're looking at expansion. Well, they've been looking at expansion for years, but now they're really going to get serious about it once the Bay Area team starts. They're going to try to get even potentially to South Florida. So what the WNBA is doing now we're going to see with the broadcast deal. And we talked about it on the sporting class with John Skipper. If they're still a part of the NBA deal, then the WNBA and all this talk about how they are a standalone entity, then I won't be buying it. If they go out on their own and announce a TV deal that doubles the value, which was pinned at 60 million as part of the NBA deal, if they can really get double that on their own, then you're talking about meaningful change to the value of the teams and to the value of the league in general. So it's an incredibly exciting time because this is it. This is their moment. They hadn't seen numbers like this. It beat the 2004 draft with the Antarousi, which got 600,000. So this, we are seeing a different world. A couple things. First, I don't think it's necessarily true to say it came out of nowhere because the draft viewership has increased um, over the past four years, especially like the, the bubble season for the WNBA when they put a lot more games on TV was when a lot of this huge growth for the WNBA started. And while the number from this Monday night was obviously a lot huger than it was last year, it's been going up every year. Um, the second thing, which I think like, a lot of people back here were surprised that like, it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big number. A couple million people watched. Um, the WNBA has finally like embraced uh, the draft as an event and I think you know Billy it's not sexist to say that they need a clock by the way yeah. but they had they had ticketed fans this year they got rid of the dress code which I think stifled a lot of players ability to express themselves and to make it a fashion show the way the NFL draft is like I know when I watch the NFL draft and I see players coming in in like their suits and their outfits I'm always like that's some of the most shared stuff you'll see on social media that night and so I think that has a large part to do with it and I don't think it's all Caitlin Clark I do think that Angel Reese Cameron Brink um, Camila Cardoso there's a number of players that I think are really driving the attention because we've gotten used to seeing them play in college for four years and we've gotten more used to seeing more games on TV like the number of games, both in college and the WNBA that have been on TV have b basically like equally correlated to more viewership. But we're in a different world now. Last year, they had 570,000 people watch the draft. That's nice. But a step up from 570 to 2 million is just you can't plan that. You don't expect to have growth like that. And that's not explained by increased exposure of games or knowledge of more players or a change of dress code, that could be a total sea change I didn't say in that. I every didn't say part those of the were business. The only reasons why. I'm just explaining that it didn't, A, it didn't come out of nowhere because the interest level has been increasing for years, which I think correlates with people being able to actually watch the games on TV. And we've already, I don't, I don't think I need to repeat the same things we've been saying for like three months about why I think Caitlin Clark has come in at the perfect time for this to happen, but there's a number of factors that go into it. And her stardom and her style of play, I think, is one of the biggest factors, but we've already talked about it 15 times, so I didn't mention it again. What I'm excited for is May 14th. I think that is her first nationally televised game, and there's going to be a lot of eyes both watching the game and looking at the numbers. And if you see numbers that day, uh, I did a wait to see, Jessica, I'm curious what you would think. There'll be more people watching that game than watching the Braves Mets on Sunday night on ESPN. And that would have been unheard of. There could be more people watching that game than who watched the Masters, the final round, which I think nobody thought would be possible. 
Uh, what kind of number do you expect from their first nationally televised game? I don't know, but I mean, I think it's going to be huge. And I think that, you know, it, it it's not a flash in the pan. I think that, like, this is part of the growth you're seeing in women's sports has been proven in other women's sports as well with the NWSL signing a huge rights deal last year that really upped their valuation. Um, and this is part of the reason that, you know, they, they brought in Kathy Engelbert to be the commissioner because she's overseen a pretty momentous time for the WNBA. They're expanding next year. They're going to have to keep expanding, which she talked about um, ahead of the draft. And, I mean, it's just, like you said, the CBA is coming up. They can opt out in 2025, and there's going to be a renewed rights negotiation in 25. So um, it's a huge opportunity, hopefully, that, you know, the, the WNBA is up for the task and up for the challenge of, like, meeting it where it is. Uh, I think there's also, like, the added um, element of, you know, certain owners in the WNBA willing to, like Mark Davis, literally invest a lot in the team and make it a place where free agents want to play. And it's no surprise that they've now won back-to-back -back championships. They've built a dedicated facility for the Aces to play in. Um, you're seeing similar things in, in Seattle with them landing free agents because of their practice facilities. And so I think like some of the owners that aren't putting that into it need to step up and do that as well. Uh, chartered flights is obviously something we've talked about a lot on this show as well. Some of the owners are for it. Some of the owners don't want to do it. Um, so there's a lot going on kind of behind the scenes that I think this moment, it, it's like everyone who watches the sport is ready for them to like take the leap. And it, it happens slowly. Like it's happened slowly over the last few years, right? Like mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark's rookie salary is more than it would have been if she entered the league during the last CBA. And it's less than it would have been if she were uh, joining the league during the next CBA. It's going up. And, and I think that you know, this is it's just a huge moment for the WNBA, and I, I really hope that they seize it. These are major leaps, though. Is it? So, David, I have no doubt that first game is going to do a massive number. But what I do wonder about is game six, game eight, game ten. Are those games going to do a massive number? I don't know, to be honest with you. It's the biggest question they're facing, and that's when I talk about is it a flash in the pan? Is it sustainable? Because you try to have a company which grows and you try to grow at a consistent rate because the concern is if you grow at such a huge rate really quickly, you cannot sustain that and then expectations are really not met. And I, and I worry with the WNBA as with any business that has this sort of moment, if you don't take advantage of it or it doesn't work, right. it actually puts you in a worse place than you would have been had you just continued the growth that Jessica was talking about prior to this year, which was incremental. So that's why game six and eight are actually way more important than game one. What happens when uh, people are getting used to seeing it? Do they keep watching? But the college basketball WNBA calendar works in their favor, correct? Because you're riding the high of March Madness, then you go right into the draft, and then the season starts shortly after the draft. So people don't have that much time to get distracted by other things. So if you still have that excitement from March, from March Madness, from Caitlin getting drafted, first game is a month from now, it sounds like. It's literally a perfect storm. There is no break. You have to feel for these players. They get out of the tournament and then right to the draft, right to training camp. I think training camp starts April 25th or so, and then right into the first game, May 12th. No offseason whatsoever. That is taxing on athletes. Uh, playing year round and, and women have been forced to do that. It's well documented in order to supplement their income. It eventually can get to your body. So uh, that's another thing to watch is, is the health of these players. What's the movie you're reviewing for us this week? Can we spend some time talking about Girl State? It's a perfect movie to review. Does anyone watch it on Apple TV? I haven't seen a documentary. It. So it's a movie. I didn't know this existed. The American Legion apparently has a program. And I reviewed Boy State on Nothing Personal this morning and now Girl State. Girl State is a program of women where they send in Missouri or states around the country where they have a political learning camp. It's not a sports camp. You go and you get elected governor or attorney general or Supreme Court. It's a one week intense training program where women or boys or girls learn to be politicians and they learn to argue issues. And I was taken aback by the inequality of girl state versus boy state. And we talk about inequality on so many different levels. Well, now it has seeped down to the level of high school where the boys state program with American Legion is hugely financed and supported. And the girls state 
is barely financed at all. The rules are way more strict. The ability for them to learn is quashed in a way that is totally unfair. And this documentary follows girls, four of them, as they run for office during the week and as they figure out how to navigate a world where for no reason at all, they're at a disadvantage before the first jump ball. It's a fascinating one-two documentary to watch. Girl State's brand new on Apple TV. Boy State is from 2020. I suggest watching Boy State first so you have a frame of reference and then Girl State so you can have a discussion. I suggest those parents send their kids to a real camp. Go jump in a lake, play some softball. I mean, do <laughs> some, some color war. Do something. <laughs> color I mean, Jesus. Make a friendship bracelet. <laughs> All top bunk. <laughs> Archery. <laughs> it's a really cool camp, and they weren't nerds. Uh, 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 David, okay. good, good talking uh, to fly you. Fly a kite. Uh, uh, <laughs> nothing personal. Were you telling him to go fly a kite, or were you Perhaps. telling him? Were you, I, don't, I don't know which it was. Were you telling him to go to a camp and fly a kite, or were you telling him to go fly a kite? See you later. <laughs>